Hey there, we are live. Thanks for joining us this morning. I appreciate it. It's this morning on the West Coast of America. Uh, it's likely after five o'clock wherever you are. And if you're going to drink while we do this, fantastic. That is that is advanced behavior. Uh, I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th. You can tell that by the little banner in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. And in just a moment, we're going to meet our guests. I want to let you know that we're getting together today to celebrate a piece of work in voiceover artists and actors' lives that often give them fits. Um, accents and dialects tend to be one of the things that is mentioned most often as the thing that keeps me from working, from auditioning, from feeling like I'm an accomplished artist. Uh, it gives us pause. Do I really know how to do a Southern Mongolian accent? Yeah, they're not going to be able to tell. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do a Korean accent. They'll never know. Um, this tends to be a whole massive field that people look at and go, well, I, you know, I can do a New York accent. Who can't? Uh, and then when you realize that there are literally dozens of New York area accents to deal with, and when they say, uh, oh, I can do a British accent. Which of the hundred some odd British accents is that that you can do? When you realize that, it gives you that that moment of deep breath and you go, oh, wow, maybe I don't know this as much as I do. What do I do? I don't know what to do. I just won't do it. And it stops you from auditioning for things like uh, audiobooks and commercials and narration and uh, video games. Um, many of you have heard me tell the story of uh, uh, my friend JP, who uh, was concerned about his native accent, of his Boston accent, uh, until he got an audition for Call of Duty where they were looking for somebody from Boston. And he got it, he nailed it, and he booked it. So it, it tends to play in our performers' lives in many different ways, and joining us today is my accent coach, uh, Jim Johnson. And Jim and Dan O'Day and Karen Eileen Gordon uh, have joined us all today. And they are, can you guys all just say hello so I know your mics are working? Hello. Hello. Hello, hello. hello. Perfectly done. Perfectly done. Now, can you do that with a Southern Mongolian accent? <coughs> hello. Oh, no. Good job, Dan. Good job. Sorry, my screen froze right? for a moment. Yes. And scene. <laughs> all right. So, Here's what we're going to do today, and, and we're doing it for a reason. I'll get to that reason in just a second. Um, we are uh, we are celebrating a little bit today because uh, yesterday the doors swung wide open for the accents class, which is a fairly new class that Dan and Jim have put together. That's why they're at the bottom of your screen holding us up. Uh, the accents class shows you how to build any number of in-demand accents from scratch. And Jim's method is so interesting and lovely and precise and dependable. Um, because the one thing I haven't mentioned about accents is that once we're done creating our version of an accent, we sit there and we wonder whether it's good enough, whether it is competitive enough to actually commit to audio and to uh, to say, oh yeah, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna send that audition in or I'm gonna go on set and I'm gonna use that or I'm gonna go in studio and I'm gonna use that. So I, I want you to know that you can join the accents class by just simply going to that URL, voheroes.com slash accents. And it will take you right to the registration page that shows you all the different things that you get when you join the accents class. And if you wouldn't mind letting Dan know, because he's the one that runs that page, if you would let him know that I sent you, it would let me lord over him the incredible number of people that I would be sending his way. Plus, he'll give me a little something, something. And this class I took, I took and was blown away. And it includes this time around, the home study version of the class includes all of the materials that uh, were, were used in the live class from earlier this year, plus 
something that I mentioned yesterday really has me kind of ticked off. And that is that you're doing a fifth week and you're doing it live. It's as if, no, we're going to go on vacation for a month or so, and then we're going to come back and we're going to give something that David couldn't have in his version of the class. So this fifth week that's live is going to be additional coaching, additional Q&A, additional material. And truly, what I've found to be so, and I'll stop talking here in just a second, I'm just so excited about this. Uh, what I found to be most useful uh, was not just the training in how to use Jim's method, but then the support materials that Jim claimed back a year or more ago when I took the class, he would constantly update. And I thought to myself at the time, yeah, you know, that'll be nice. A couple of years, we'll get an update. That'll be fun. It started being updated immediately. And other accents started to be added immediately. Um, people say, well, they claim there's like literally dozens and dozens of accents, but I only see seven in the, in the original syllabus. It's because they don't want to overwhelm you. It's, it's, it's hard enough sometimes for people to wrap their head around opening up to the process without having this huge just pile of stuff to go through. So they do it one step at a time. And it's just, listen, here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop talking. And I'm going to ask Jim some questions so he can do some talking. Uh, Jim, when you first started this whole notion of doing accents, not coaching accents, but doing accents, what led you to believe that you were going to be good at this? Did you Were you one of the kids that sat down and, and listened to records and repeated what you heard? And what, Tell me what happened. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, yes. Yeah, I was one of those geeks who was making faces in the mirror and doing voices, singing along with "Ah, Menry the Eight, Ah, and Menry the Eight," only speeding up my forty-five even even uh, faster than that wow. in the ancient times. So, yeah, I always messed with them when I was a kid, um, and and then I really did find that even like heading off to when I was in school and I went off to grad school and and even beyond that, I was doing it all by instinct. Uh, but I, I always had a pretty good ear, but then I had a number of things, some accents that I struggled with. And, and now looking back, there were also some things I thought I had that I actually didn't have um, that I realized over time just by digging in a little bit deeper. Yeah. It feels as though, uh, you know, uh, getting into the process that you teach people in the accents class, it feels as though you took a step back and you said, okay, wait a minute, let's, let's figure out what the components are of all of these accents so that I can say, okay, here's this part of this accent, this is how you do that. Here's this part of this accent, this is how you do that. And it feels very, very step-by-step -step, uh, process-oriented, um, which kind of takes out some of the guesswork. Is that a reasonable thing to say? I think so, because that, I, I've been teaching accents and coaching accents for easily a couple of decades or more. And it really wasn't until about five, I mean, I was working on methodologies throughout, but it was finally just a, just a few years ago when I had a lot more lights lighting up in my brain where I was putting together so many more things where I started to realize commonalities and differences and it's so some of it, I think, is the time that it took for me to stew on it. Mm -hmm. Some of it is also simply having put in the hours both into the research of like working on the accent and trying to teach it, uh, trying to teach it or prepare to be able to teach it and coach it. But then also repetition. How many times have I had to teach this over and over and over again? So I sort of got in my 10,000 hours through doing that. And that's Thank you, where Malcolm I got Gladwell. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Malcolm Gladwell. Um, even though some people find it a bit of a fallacy, but there's some truth to that at least. Sure. Because it, it really was just just like a lot of things came together for me because I'm old and I've been doing the same thing for a while, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's interesting because you bring that up and, you know, there have been plenty of articles written saying you don't need 10,000 hours. You just need 20. 
to be okay at something, to be facile at something, as opposed to the 10,000 hours of being absolute world-class Wayne Gretzky, Bill Gates, Bill Joy, Dan O'Day about something. And so, um, by the way, for those of you that are watching this live on Facebook, I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th. These are my guests, Karen Eileen Gordon, Jim Johnson, and Dan O'Day. And uh, if you've got questions, comments, what I'd love to know is what your approach has been so far, you, the person watching this uh, event. What has been your approach so far when it comes to accents and has it been successful? And the way to answer that question is to just type in the comments below the video that you're watching and let us know. And by the way, this means whether you're watching it live or whether you're watching it as it's been already recorded because we'll still see the comments that you put in. Uh, also, if you wouldn't mind giving us a like and maybe sharing with people that you think would get benefit from understanding how to put together accents, Again, uh, the Accents class is a much, much deeper dive than we're gonna be able to do here today. But what we are gonna do here today is gonna be a whole lot of fun. Uh, and you can register for the Accents class by going to voheroes.com slash accents. One thing I wanna share with you is that if you do so uh, before tomorrow night at nine o'clock Pacific as we are doing this show live, so by uh, Tuesday, October 6th at uh, 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight East Coast time, Dan himself will reach into his wallet and pull out $300 and pay the first $300 of your tuition for the accents class, which is, did you know that, Dan? Sure. Yeah. I'm behind that all the way. So just so you know, just go ahead and pop your, and hey, Heath, uh, I appreciate that. Heath is uh, showing us that he's here and you're welcome with the, uh, with the stuff from the Zoom class last month. Um, the, uh, notion that there's so many cool, uh, there's so many cool controls here. Um, so I'm just gonna, uh, I'm gonna leave that up for just a moment. Um, uh, just to let people see who people are. So Jim Johnson, let me move over to Dan O'Day. Dan, you decided about a year and a half ago, a little bit longer, maybe two years ago to put together a class on accents as part of this panoply of classes of which the ACX masterclass is a member. Um, you tend to partner with people who, if I, if I could say so, are really, really good, except in my case. Uh, no, I, in, in, I partner, I, and this was not a plan. I only realized it looking back. What I tend to do is partner with someone who, in my opinion, is the best in the world at that specific topic. And so with audiobooks, you know, you, you know more about the audiobook business than anybody I've I've heard of, uh, let alone met. Um, some of my other classes, you know, that are they're all with friends who just happen to be great at what they do. Yeah, and, and, and I, so Jim, you're saying that Jim Johnson is now your friend? Uh, he was until I got to know him. I see, I see, and that was his decision, not yours, correct? I, I actually, David. Um, I wanted to do some kind of a class. And when I first started thinking about it, it wasn't an online class because it probably was at least 15 years ago that I, maybe longer. And I've been looking um, a long time ago. Uh, we, we still have it in my catalog. We had a, we sold a recording called the dialect tapes, mm. which is a little, you know, a little recording that, it introduces you to some stuff that, that I had never heard before because I didn't know anything about accents. But I never, I always felt that's great. We need a, a, a class for it. And I looked and I talked and I, I met virtually every, any every name in the field. And for whatever reason, some of them were just great people, great talents, um, great teachers. But they're, I, I made a class. And Jim and I have a mutual friend, a voiceover guy who used to be in radio. And that guy kind of introduced us. And it, it was like throwing a light switch. It was night and day. So it's a long-winded answer to a question all of us have long forgotten. Well, what you've done is you've put together with Jim uh, a class that, to me, was the perfect storm of introduction, uh, laying out the process and then applying the process 
to on a, on a repetitive basis to the accents that are in demand for people who uh, are doing auditioning work, on doing work on stage, doing work on set. Um, and uh, it's not just the theory of how to do this, but how to apply it to the world of performance. And Jim, I think part of that comes from the fact that you two are an actor with, with a specialty in Shakespearean work. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, I act in a lot of different things. Um, but uh, yeah, I work each summer with the Prague Shakespeare Company and I teach and, and perform with them. And, but I also do voiceover and anime and, and other stage acting as well, primarily. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So, um, so our fourth guest in the upper right hand corner of your screens at home, if you're following from left to right, um, is Karen Eileen Gordon. And Karen Eileen Gordon and I have known each other for a long time. Uh, she is one of my VO Heroes pros, and she's also one of my VO Heroes coaches now. And um, your yes. uh, background is television, voiceover. Uh, I don't know that I've ever heard you mention stage work, but certainly electronic performance is, is what you do. And um, what has been your process for building accents, if any? Excellent question, Mr. Lawrence. So I have always considered myself to have a decent ear, like Jim mentioned. And something that I used to do as a kid was try and copy accents and dialects that I heard around me. Just like, you know, I remember being seven years old and trying to do that. So I, that was always fun for me from the beginning. So when I stepped into a professional creative career, I took that process in there with me and was able to recreate a lot of accents and dialects that native speakers affirmed for me were strong. So based on that, I thought, oh, well, maybe I can apply the listen, repeat, 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 get it in my bones and my mouth. Uh, even if it took me a hundred hours, I would watch a TV show or a movie with a native speaker in that accent or dialect and listen to the dialogue and repeat it like, you know, over and over and over again. So that really has has been my process, the listen, repeat, the sort of get it in my body sort of approach. With the affirmation of a native speaker saying, yeah, that's good. Yeah, I got, I got that more than once. And then of course there were the times when I was like, I have this audition, I'm gonna do the best I can. Uh, nobody who's from this country is gonna believe one word I say, but I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna give it my best shot because yeah. it's, yeah, okay. Everybody has really different ways of approaching this. Uh, George Utley, who's one of our ACX Masterclass students, uh, and one of my pros says, I started with the idea of finding a speech pattern close to mine as a base. Hmm. Jim's analysis of commonalities helped me recognize which accents would be easiest to really get into. And I've been moving toward more strange accents from there. <laughs> so I don't know exactly what qualifies as strange to each individual, but uh, it's interesting. Do, do people, Jim, have proclivities towards certain accents that uh, are based on their heritage or their lineage or, or what's the story there? You know, I don't think it's based on heritage or lineage, but maybe based on their, I think it's mainly based on their exposure. So like, whether it's like Karen Eileen about, about these things that you would hear in movies or elsewhere, or whether it's something that is, is uh, uh, you know, you just hear it enough because that's what you listen to as a radio station or that's a movie that you were into as a kid. I think it's the familiarity actually that causes it. What's in your household? What's, what are your neighbors like? You know, my, my grandparents' neighbor, Mr. Mon, is forever my, my default for, you know, going to a strong Norwegian sort of accent. Yeah. Mr. Mon. He named himself after an Ikea product, right? <laughs> Indeed he did, yeah. yeah. Um, if you have, if you're watching this and you have uh, a comment or a question, we're going to be taking uh, questions after we do some work here in just a moment because uh, the cool thing that we're going to witness in just a few moments is Jim working with Karen Eileen to create an accent using his process from scratch. 
and it's going to be lovely to watch, I guarantee you. Not because Karen Eileen isn't the brilliant actor that she is, and not because Jim isn't the brilliant teacher and coach that he is, but because what you learn in the accent class absolutely works. And we're gonna see a, an instance of that. But if you have questions about uh, accents, about dialects, about executing them for auditions, for work on set or in studio, if you have questions about the, the voiceover <clears throat> world in general and how accents and dialects fit into that world, uh, if you have questions that are fairly um, precise in terms of something like, how much of an accent should you use? How much, is it over the top? Is it just barely under the surface? I mean, how do you apply this? Do you apply this with a tiny little filigree brush or do you apply it with a roller? Um, you know, that's the way I look at it when I look at, at things, you know, with, with uh, animation. And I, Jim, tell me if I'm, I'm wrong on this. But with animation and video games, often it's a broader uh, approach to it than perhaps with doing an intimate, uh, MCU or ECU on camera where you're you're kind of like hinting at it as a normal human being would. What, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, a lot of it depends on what the audience is. What are they going to be ready to hear? Because um, you got to make sure that it's clear and understandable for them. If it's not, then it doesn't really matter. So that's definitely a big part of it. Um, is it a native speaker audience or are you aimed at something that's more broad um, than that? Um, because you're definitely aiming for the listener's ear. That's yep. a big element of it, yep. yeah. All right, so for those of you that are watching, please share this with your friends, share this with people in your, just hit the share button and share it with your timeline if that's what you'd like to do. But let people know that we're about to actually witness in person the building of uh, an accent between Karen Eileen Gordon and Jim. And I'm trying to heap as much pressure on both of them as I can. And I'd love to know from Dan O'Day, how am I doing? Uh, it's hard for me to answer that because I'm sitting here thinking, oh man, what if it doesn't work? Really? Oh, boy, we're going to look like wow. fools. Um, but I, 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 I've seen Jim work and I know uh, Karen Eileen has a lot more talent than anyone sitting at this microphone does. Uh, so I know they're going to do it, but um, uh, uh, not subjectively, you know, it's like, oh, I hope they do. And uh, objectively, yeah. I know they're going to nail it. So, and the best part is, uh, Jim, Karen, Eileen, if it doesn't, if it's not perfect, you guys are going to look really silly. <laughs> I'm fine. Yeah. You know? It's it's on us. Wow. Yeah. I, I, Thanks, I, Dan. I always know that when I invite Dan O'Day on Facebook, there's going to be something incendiary that happens. All right. So again, this is in service to the fact that the Accents class is now open for registration. If you go to voheroes.com slash accents and register, Dan will pay the first $300 of your tuition, but you have to act before tomorrow night as we record this. Tomorrow night, Tuesday, October 6th by 9 p.m. I wouldn't wait. I would do it now. If you're thinking this is the kind of thing that you want to add to your vocal tool belt, that you want to add to your actor quiver, uh, this is this is the one that you want to take. This is the class of all the things that I've experienced. This is the one that works best for me, and I can see will work best for even options people. You know, you you've heard me say many times there are process people and there are options people. But uh, uh, even though this is a very much oriented around a process, it's got so much for options people that you will absolutely love. So what I'd love to do is I would like to add uh, Jim and Karen Eileen uh, to the screen. Hold on one second. How do I do this? I think I'm just going to. Oh, he, he's vanished. <laughs> David has vanished. He's gone away. He <laughs> removed himself. He did. That was, wow. Hello. <laughs> so I, I have to say thank you for being willing to do this. I'm sure that this is nerve wracking. 
I'm a you know, little, I'm excited. I have to say I'm a little nervous because it really is live. I really have, I have never attempted this. I don't know what we're working on. It's really. In well, the and I'm, you know, I got to admit, I'm, I'm a little bit like, well, let's see what happens <laughs> because we haven't talked at all about what your background is, what you've got. Nope. Cause normally I would nope. check in with somebody if I'm going to do a coaching session. Yeah. So this isn't like the typical class because usually I've given them a lot of things to work through and work right. on. And then, um, and then, um, then we start to work in person and we fine tune. Okay. So we're a little bit before that. And I don't know what you know. Oh boy. Right? <laughs> so what do you know? What do you know about a, a Northern Irish accent? Goodness. Well, I'm wearing my clatter that I, I have, I know I have that. Um, <laughs> I know nothing, which is one of the reasons I wanted to choose it. I lived in the United Kingdom. I was in England for a year, so I, I absorbed a lot of that. And I lived in France for a while, so I absorbed a lot of that. So I feel like immersion is one way that I have gotten to where I think I need to be with an accent. But with something like this, if I'm called upon to do something where I have no experience and I, nobody comes to mind that I can sort of channel, as a base, I'm I'm really starting at, at the starting gate, quite okay. honestly. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. So typically I'd want to make sure that you've got more information and a deeper exposure to it. But okay. we don't have the luxury of that at the moment. So okay. in some ways, this is a little bit like, mm -hmm. oh, holy cow, you just got the call and you've got to do this audition. Yes. And you have to do this like fast turnaround for how to do Northern Irish, right? And that happens, oh. by the way, as you know, yeah. Oh, it happens definitely. all the time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so let me, this is one of the things that I have to ask you to do, and I always have to ask people to do, which is I need you to do it as if you are a master. Because oh, then I can wow. give you feedback. Just trust yourself <laughs> enough to give it a real go, <laughs> like you rock at it. And then after the fact, oh, you gosh. can have, be full of regrets, you know, like my <laughs> wife is now. <laughs> at this point in our marriage. She's full of regrets because it's been a while. It's been almost 30 oh, years. So, oh, you know, yeah. okay. so knowing that, I, wow. and, and right now I'm just going to assume you have some sense of what an Irish accent is. I yeah. can hear it. Like, um, you know, yeah. I mean. Can I hear you take a run at it just so I can hear what comes when you mm -hmm. just instinctively do an Irish accent? Okay. I have to tell you, I'm super, I might barf. I'm super nauseous and right that's now. that's cool. That's cool. That's <laughs> I'm here to catch it. Okay. Oh, that's good. It's virtual. So it's all good. David, are, uh, are we checking in on David? Okay. Yeah, just checking in. We're watching. Okay. <laughs> right, so like a master, and it sounds like I have permission to do it really badly. I feel, uh, that's you do. I you absolutely okay. do. In fact, that's part of your job. Otherwise, oh. it's, I lose my job security. All right. Here we go. Wow. <clears throat> Irish. Let me bring in the Irish vibe. Um, mm hmm if I'm a queer daughter, it's a queer father to be leaving me lonesome these 12 hours of dark. And I pile in the turf with the dogs barking and the cows mooing and my own teeth rattling with the fear. Isn't there the harvest boys with their tongues red for drink and the 10 tinkers is camped in the East Glen and the thousand militia bad cess to them, walking idle through the land. That's awesome, actually. Oh, get back on screen, <laughs> you. That was great. Okay. You know what? I think a lot of times when people think um, when people think of an Irish accent, they immediately sort of go to the Lucky Charms kind of accent. Right? I apologize. Yeah, I do. No, you I, no, I feel like okay, I, I got to do it badly. You're right. Yes, that's, no, that's no, where you I went. didn't. That's you did went. not. And I need you to back off of that because I'm going to be the one to judge you. <laughs> <laughs> it's what Understood. I do. It's a hobby of mine Understood. in addition to being my work. I will okay? see some yeah, No, what you did, the awesome thing that you did that, that was one of those things where I was like, I was very pleasantly surprised. And I don't mean that because I don't believe in you, Karen Eileen, <laughs> even though I've just met you. I, it's not that I don't believe in you, <laughs> but so often people want to go to what they think of as an Irish accent. And that's where we were is just really, really general yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. Now, when we're looking at Ireland, so just a hint of background, when we're looking at Ireland, to the south and west of Ireland, you get more of an accent that's a little bit more like the Lucky Charms. Really? But when you get to the north and the east, when you're looking at like Dublin and Northern Ireland and Donegal, which is a part of the Republic of Ireland, but it's okay. even though it's north of Northern Ireland, it doesn't right. make sense. But okay. you, it's much more along the line of what you just did. And what I would say is you did something that's pretty close, close to a Dublin accent. 
So wow. you rocked it, lady. Wow. You really did. Yeah. That's why I'm like, you have to stop insulting you because I'm going to have to okay. really search to find things to insult you about. Okay. Okay. Agreed. Thank so you. One great thing that you did is you had the R on there. That sort of hard R quality that I think is a huge key to any of the Irish accents. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're rocking at that. So okay. part of what I always want to do in a coaching session too, is I want to find what are you doing well that we can spread throughout? All right. And then Makes what sense. are the tweaks that we need to make? Okay. So the two big tweaks that I want to give you, one of them is going to be about the intonation and it's not even, it's actually not even a big tweak. It, okay. It's a, it's a potentially challenging tweak. Okay. And then there's one sound that I want us to work on, which is the very much, it'll happen in Dublin too. But again, Dublin is almost like Northern light. Huh. Um, okay. the, the Northern Irish sound that happens, sound. it's the ow diphthong. So for example, you have the word cows and thousand. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it starts to become, this is, because you would actually said something about maybe Scottish, right? Yeah, I I'm Aberdeen. My clan is from Aberdeen, the Gordon well, there clan. There you go. So. You had an interest in Scottish as well. With well, the the accent of this area, Ulster, it got changed significantly because of um, King James. He was King James the Fourth of Scotland, I believe it was, and then oh. became became the King of England and basically went, oh man, we need to hold on to Ireland. So uh, any of you Scots who wanna move over to Ireland, we got area for you here in Ulster. So a lot of Scots moved there wow. and it made a political shift and a religious shift, but it also made a dialectical shift. Wow. And so there's elements of Scottish that are in this Okay, so that's mm -hmm. part of why the accent. Oh, it gets it. And so the, the thing that I was aware of as I was reading through was I'm taking my best stab at it. And my confidence level obviously is very low because I'm guessing yeah. um, rather yeah. than going, this is this region. This is what happened. This is what it sounds like, which changes the performance entirely, even as you're talking to me. So, so you're getting some orientation now. Yeah, this is yeah. Starting to, your brain is connecting with that. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. The, yeah. And the cows, can you, I mean, do, would, do, do you give somebody sort of like a line reading? Like for cows, would you say like, it needs to sound like this? And then we're going to try and weave that in throughout? So Absolutely. Of, well, the, because yeah. it happens in the word thousand as well, for example. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So the ow sound as in how now brown cow. Yeah. Um, it will go from ow to something more like eh, as in dress. Dress. Thousands. Or something close to ah thousands. as a trap. Like thousands? Yes, you're doing great with thousands. it already. Okay. And wow. Yeah, so like th like thousand. Thousands. Yes. And uh -huh. now we'll do the same thing with cows. Cows. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're doing really cows. well with it. I'm gonna try a little tweak on that. Let's go a little bit further, especially for this Northern Irish one that sounds a little stronger. Let's mm -hmm. go towards the ah sound of trap instead. Say ah. Uh, Ah. Uh, oh. Oh. Uh, yes. And now one of the things I kind of hear you doing that's, that has a little bit to do with intonation. Okay. So you had a good intonation thing that's a little bit along the line of this lift, yeah? Yeah. So um, let's take that kind of intonation and there's a placement element, which placement is the sense of where the sound lives in the mouth. Okay. The placement for this Northern Irish accent is very low in the mouth. Low in, and the, low in the mouth. Low yeah, very good. Very like, good. Like meaning like in the jaw sort of? Is yeah, we... absolutely. I'll take that. Down, low, down low. into the jaw area. Down, down, down into the jaw. So you've down. got a great ear, so you're picking up on it. hear it. it. I, if you say it, except the problem is you'd have to say every piece of copy in the uh, film that I was starring in in order for me to nail it, right? But I'd rather, rather like understand how to convert copy myself. That's what every actor really needs is to right. do yeah, empowerment. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, this is one of this is one of the sounds that's always really challenging for people in okay. this accent because it's so extreme and it's so outside of most people's recognition. Yeah. Like, like the, but but so much of the rest of it you got instinctually. So you actually make this coaching possible. Okay. Oh. So let's because otherwise this could be absolutely overwhelming and we'd see how far we get. But you're you're okay. already rocking it, okay? Okay, great. So, so take the phrase how now brown cow and can you do that cow. sound change in that? Oof. Now, 
I, I kind of want to, I'm going to, I want to ask you to cheat and just say it for me and I'll repeat it, but let's not do that. Not, Let me a, try. Chance. not a chance in the Hades. Um, uh, and, and the, and the, I'm going to write down the word that you gave me as a reference, like the ah sound, like in, something like, or, let's go with the ah sound, like trap, trap, not a trap, or cat. Oh, cat, cat. You like that? I do have a big rescue named Moose, cat. Oh, good, good. Moose, That's your word. moose, moose. <laughs> <laughs> Cat. Um, oh boy. Uh, cat, cat, cat. Uh, and it's down here. Cat. On the thousand militia, bad says to them, walking idle through the land. I can do that. I You're doing great. Land. Yeah. And I totally get you wanting <laughs> to do that for now. Can I do it now in the beginning, idle through the land? Yes, yes. <laughs> Because what you're doing now, by doing that, you're kind of bringing your attention there. So you're yeah. actually bringing your placement there. Okay. And in this accent, the placement is low like that. And there's a whole bunch of different vowel sounds that actually shift slightly lower. Oh, boy. In the lower mouth. Than, okay. And it's the placement that makes it happen. If you get the placement in place, Oof. it takes care of so many different things. And okay. this is a big key, I would say, for especially for people who are like doing audiobook work. Yes. It is really less about figuring out all the sounds and it's much more about the placement okay. and the intonation so that you give the flavor of it without making people feel like, wait, is this a totally different actor necessarily? <laughs> because Got the main it. thing you want to do is you want to tell the story and we don't want this to get in the way of telling the story. We don't also don't want this to get in the way of your work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm going to give you one more example. I'm just going to say... Great. No. 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 Yeah, that's, now we're going really extreme with it. And no. you rocked it. Can no. you take that over into How Now Brown Cow? <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> no. no. A hi, no. Brown cow. Yeah, that's great. It yeah, sounds now, very, like I have to give myself permission to have it sound really odd. You and know what? And I think that's absolutely true. Like when I was okay. trying to first work on the Pittsburgh accent. Oh, they won't say downtown. They'll say the extreme of it is downtown. Wow. Now downtown. I'm going too far and I'm doing a, I'm acting, it, I'm a terrible actor. Who's going downtown, are you? I don't believe are you. Are you going downtown, are you? <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. yep. So downtown. And I had to make myself go way too far because I kept and wanting then, to go ow, ow. And down, then pull it down. back. And it's like I had to go way too far. And I okay. think that's really important with all accents. Nay. Now, so like, so now, Nay, it's like N O W becomes like N A Y Y Y. Nay. Now, can you make your way back to the ooh part of it? Now. No. Oh, now I can hear that. Now. Yes. Now it's, it's like actually a little when dip. you do that, now. if you do something like now, you're actually getting closer to Scotland. Oh man. Okay. Yeah. Now they'll go so all the way from there. They'll also do something like. Like more like new and coo, yeah. so that a hairy cow is a heady coo. Right? <laughs> heady coo. Heady yeah, coo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we actually we really do need to get that that ooh part on it. So say okay. say right now. Right now. Yeah, that's great. You found the second right, half of it. Right Can now. You cow now, brown cow. It's like two syllables. Now. Um, How about that? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Hi, now, Brian, Kai. Cool. Now, do me, do me a favor and relax just a little bit. <laughs> Hi, now. <laughs> okay. Relax. Hi, now, Brian, Kai. It's really, really great. Now, the second half of it is still wanting to kind of go towards, towards hi, Scottish. now. Yeah. yeah. Can you say how? How? Yeah, so now oh. it's almost like your second syllable because you described it as two That's syllable it feeling, feels right? Like mm -hmm. Make sure the second syllable makes its way forward there. So it gets to go, how? Ah, so like, oh, so this helps me so much to have a visual. So it starts here and moves forward. Yes? You oh, can, I, well, oh, that helps me. Well, in reality, no. no. <laughs> but that makes sense to you. And that I described mm -hmm. it that way because I, I'm seeing your gestures. Okay. I'm a huge fan of physicalization of a lot of elements. Okay. And so I think that sense of it moving forward, because it does come to the lips and you weren't getting it around to the lip rounding, even though it's a back no, vowel. I was staying here because I'm focused on the low, low jaw. Okay. All right. Uh, let, me, let me see. 
it's a lot going on here. It's fascinating. Wow, yeah. so exciting. Uh, hi, Nai, Brown, 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 mm, Brown is tough. Uh, Kai, it all wants cool. to be a question. Mm -hmm. So it's, oh, and that's okay. We okay. do want to go towards the question for we this do. accent. That's uh, absolutely what we uh, with the intonation. Uh, 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 question, well question, done, question. yes, yes. So oh. I think that you're really, really close to it. Right okay. now you're kind of going, ha -hu, like you're separating them almost. <laughs> yeah, I'm because it feels, I mean, eventually they'll get mushed together, yeah. but like in the beginning I, it feels like. Right now. Right, right now. Right yeah. now, if you say it, I can copy it. But in order for me to like no, find it in bring my that own. Over to Brown, lady, bring that over to Brown. Br can you? You're not going to no. say it for me. Oh, I'm throwing you into the deep end. I'm going to avoid that word. So let me give you one more word. Swimming. Go. Because right now, you're the one in that phrase Brown. that you're struggling with has a consonant after it. Yes. So let me say out instead in this. Let me say out. Out. Good. Now out. Same thing. Yeah. Oh, eight brain. Mm, I'm having trouble with it. Eight brain. Say say your bra. 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 Brown. 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 Mm. Yes. <laughs> oh, we yes. said brown. Woo. Can you feel that? So you said that time. Can I hear it again? I don't know. Let's see. Yeah. Bran, Bran, Bran. Brian, that second half even more. Say out. Out, brown. There it is. Brown. You're getting closer out, and closer. Now brown. I'm still hearing you slightly, and I can see it. You're going, Brian. So look at my lips for a second. Brian. Instead of, I, can you make it to brown? Uh, brown. Yep, brown. Brown. Yes. Brown. Now, can you say, um, d can you say, let's go to, let's not go to Pittsburgh, but say downtown, but in that accent. Oh, can you say no. that right now? Right now. Can I say it right now? Downtown. Yeah, that was great. Okay. Downtown. Downtown. Downtown there. Downtown now. Exactly. That's great. So you can feel it's, it is kind of jaw oriented, right? Yes. Yeah. Now, the thing that you're already rocking at that people usually struggle with is the intonation. Oh, interesting. So the intonation has that scoop to it, and it feels like a question, yeah? Yeah, it does, yeah. But it's going to probably feel like a failed question. It, yes, uh, it, it feels like I asked the question, and then I'm like, oh, that was wrong. That's the first thing I thought. I'm like, oh, no, yeah. That's great, because what uh, it because it doesn't, it doesn't sort of get the easy rise. It doesn't go, hi, now? That would be now? easy. Yeah. How? It doesn't get that full on, like, it doesn't get the lightness to it. It's oh. always got this weight sort of dragging oh. on it. This and helps me so that. much. The imagery, it's almost like like a weight on the, because uh, like, it would go all the way up, but we're like going to keep it down a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Oh, we're going to repress the we're hell out of it. <laughs> oh, poor it. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. So how much can you, in the beginning, oftentimes in working on this accent, I ask people to sort of, I want to take away all your hope, right? <laughs> I just won the lottery. It, it just w I just won the lottery. Just won the yeah, lottery. Yeah, it sounds like, well, why then? Why are you so pained? Won the lottery. <laughs> and that's what it can feel like. Now, that said, a really good friend from Northern Ireland is one of the most fun and like open human human beings I've ever met who's like, yeah, yeah let's do that. Let's do that, right? Yeah. So this is not what that is. But it, I think it's oftentimes how Americans sort of experience it. There's an intonation oh. quality in this that's kind of like whining. <laughs> there's an off pitch <laughs> quality to it. And that whining, oh. if I whine really strongly, that's a lot like this more Northern Irish kind of thing. Oh, if I whine really strongly. Yeah. yeah. Only yeah. the funny thing is that they can actually have hope and be expressive yeah. while they have this sound quality that we interpret as kind of leaning in that direction. It's really helpful. Um, is it is it a matter of sort of going through like and this piece of copy is nice and short. Yeah. So if it, yeah. is it a matter of like sort of 
going through the copy and applying, you know, what, I mean, what we know and like running, like run, giving permission to do it badly, like over and over again, till it's sort of, till we find it, till you find the placement, you go, aha, there it is sort of yeah. thing or. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, now what I do. So again, we didn't get, we didn't get the. No, like, this was a here. cold. Yeah. This Here's is a the dump yeah. of information. We didn't yeah. get that because what I'll do is I, uh, my materials lead people through all these different practice sentences. Okay. And then through a monologue, and then also oh, okay. everybody in this class, I do a couple of additional monologues that I send recordings to everybody where I make my way through it and demonstrate these different elements. Great. And then we come into some coaching. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. so nice. you, you get the things that you need auditorily, but then I, I find I am such a gesture fanatic because oh, even great. if you're somebody who learns auditorily like you, mm -hmm. you notice I can't help but talk with my hands, right? Yeah, I do the same thing, yeah. And and so awesome. So many people, that's a big access point for them. Great. So I want to work on it by feeling I, what is that feeling of this accent overall? And you seem to like this kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> like that kind of image, you really it lit up for that. Like a blanket on, t I don't even know how to say a blanket on top, a blanket. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Now don't give in to the to the glottals as much. That's <gasps> like that blanket is going to sound a little bit more Scottish. <sighs> like, that, like that blanket. Blanket, blanket. Yeah, well, the stronger that stops, the more that it's going to sound like Scottish. Got it. That blanket. Mm -hmm. It's blanket. much more like Americans do it. Blanket. Uh, blanket. Blanket. Yeah, it's like a gentle stop at the end with that T. Blanket. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. So that's that intonation of this accent right there. It's great. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to take a run at at least a couple of lines of that, and let's sure. just see what sticks. Let's just so, let let just see what comes out. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. great. I'm just talking to you in it now. You're talking to me in it, and I want to you that repeat exposure. everything you say because then I can get it better. Oh, that's awesome. Already I hear it happening right there. Happening right it's there. Our, it seems like you're really grabbing onto it. Grabbing so onto it, yeah. Okay. You're a repetition person. And I'm a really repetition person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. So do we have time for her to just try a phrase of it? We, we have all the time in the world, Jim. Wow. What do you think? All right, but here we Karen go. Karen Eileen, go here for it. Here we go. I'm going to see. I'm going to remember trap, cat, now. Okay, trap, cat, now. So sort of like my markers, trap, cat, now. Good, say now. Now. Yeah, now. we're gonna go, now let's go too strong. Now. Now. Good, yeah, 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 yeah. Now. Well, we kind of made fun of it. Yeah, but, uh, right now. Right now. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Go ahead, take it on now. I'm gonna make a written, right, take it on now. If I'm a queer daughter, it's a queer father to be leaving me lonesome these 12 hours of dark. And I pile in the turf with the dogs barking and the calves mowing and my own teeth rattling with the fear. As if they're the harvest boys with their tongues red for drink and the tin tinkers that's camped in the East Glen and the thousand militia bad cess to them walking idle through the land. That was great. <laughs> yeah. Now you could have gone a little further with thousands with that change. Th thousand. Thousands? Yeah, say tha, like thatched roof. Thatched roof, thatched roof. Thousand? Yeah, that got uh, you to kind of like dig thousand? it in even that little bit deeper. Ah, yeah. you can slide into that thousand. Mm -hmm. Th thousand. Thousand. It oftentimes feels really wide. The ah thousand? sound for people. Thousand. Thousand. Ah, yeah. wide. Thousand. I got it. Great. Great. Got now, it. one more tweak I'd give you is you <laughs> said, if I'm a queer daughter, uh, and the, the T gotcha. happening like that is the way that it tends to happen more in the South and West. Oh. Yeah. But in the North, in the North and East, it tends to happen very much like the same way a little bit ago when I said, oh, you're making your T's a little bit Scottish there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With this accent and with so many different accents, you need to do the T's the way you would in your own, the way that you speak. Can you say that uh, word in your own voice? Daughter. So it's very D-like, yeah? Yeah, daughter. Mm -hmm. Now, conceptually, I go into phonetics. This is a tapped R sound. Well, you you know some Spanish? Claro que sí, señor. Hablo oh, español. muy bien. Sí, muy bien. gracias. So, mm -hmm. Pero as in but. Pero. Like, however, as opposed to the, the trilled perro. 
Uh -huh. Pero, that's what we do for Pero. butter. Betty Butter bought some butter. Right. That's what you would do in this accent and in Dublin as well. Daughter, daughter. So interesting to like have a map and like know this is the sound here and then I move over here. This is the sound. Like I'm literally seeing the map and wanting to put the, the things on the map so I can look at the map and go, I'm going to take myself north and now I'm going to go south and now I'm going to go a little bit. I mean, to practice like moving around the map. That sounds yes. really fun. <laughs> and when you start to notice, like, I think the more accents that you start to add to your to your toolbox, yeah, um, the more that you start to go, oh, this is the distinction. We want to notice commonalities between accents. I see. And then we also want to notice distinctions. Like the crazy thing is with this Northern Irish accent is when you start to figure that out. Yeah. You start to realize that that intonation is what's in Caribbean accents as well. <gasps> Listen to that. Yes. And it's oh. what's in like the strong version of like a New York uh, or a, a working class Mexican accent as well. Wow. Can you hear that? Yeah, that's crazy how you slid. Of course, you're the you're the you're the Dumbledore, but I mean, you just slid right in, and there they are. That's, that's the only reason I've grown the beard is so that I've been hoping someone would call me Dumbledore. You are Dumbledore? I have my wand Harry right here. Potter. Harry Potter. Yes. <laughs> this that is great. This is magical. I'm exhausted cool. in the best possible way. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you so you. much. Oh, thank for being you. Being gutsy enough to take that on. Oh, that was great. Really that was great. fascinating. Mm -hmm. Absolutely fascinating. What what happened to Dan? Where did Dan go? Dan, come back. Come back, Dan. Dan left for a moment. Uh, he'll be back. Believe me. Um. So as I was listening to that, you know, I, I. Mm -hmm. I I have been through the class and so I watched the process. And for those of you watching this live, note that that's the process. There's Dan, are you back? Yeah, I am. Okay, good. <laughs> um, uh, I, was, I was watching- You don't wanna know where I was? Okay. No, I don't care. I, I, okay. couldn't, couldn't care less. I wanna know. Um, but uh, what I was noticing was the, um, the, the, the process is, once you get used to the step-by-step -step process, you apply it to whatever is being presented to you. And that is something that doesn't feel like what I've seen before. It's, it's what I experienced when I first took the class. Because to me, when I would take other people's classes, and I can't remember in particular who I'm, I'm talking about, it just the, was the general feeling was, you never quite knew if you were getting it right. It was like, it was like a judgment call. It's like, yeah, I think that's right. I don't know, is that right? You know. But here it was very much like uh, a, a, let's take a look at the different pieces of it and then put everything together. Um, Karen, Eileen, uh, when you made those little tiny breakthroughs like co and, and, and the- the Trap, um, trap, night, night. And then the, the, the tap dars, you know, daughter. Um, daughter. Um, what did that feel like? What did what did you experience inside in terms of joy, satisfaction, accomplishment? Yeah, it felt literally like a piece clicking into place. It was very satisfying and like something was found. That's literally what it felt like. Like like uh, usually I'm like doing the best I can and repeating 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 till I feel like it's in my body and hoping that it's solid enough and th this time it was like Th this is ab like absolutely where this is rather than wondering or hoping that it's close. And I can typically get pretty close, except I don't know how consistent I am, right? If a native speaker heard it, um, I, I want a native speaker to not be thinking about my accent, but like watching the performance or listening to the, to the stage piece or to the voiceover. I want, you know, the native people to go like, what a great character rather than which, where does she think she's from? Because that's not how we talk here. So is I that felt a, that clicking into place to answer your is question. Is that a reasonable standard to hold oneself to, Jim? Uh, well, you know what? I think it depends on who your audience is. Mm. Because to me, I, I whenever there's dialects mentioned in a review, it's, it's pretty much always bad. Yeah. Um, on rare occasions, it'll be good. But sometimes I'm concerned about that because when if somebody's focused on the accent, if an audience member is focused on the accent, then I think it's probably getting in the way um, yeah, one that, way yeah. or another. Like, boy, that was clear speech. I think 
a terrible thing, a wonderful, terrible thing that somebody once said to me after a, a performance where I was doing a role, it was Shakespeare. And they said, oh, it was that it was so clear. And I was like, oh, that that I'm actually going to take a, a, that as a bad note slightly, because what you walked away was feeling that it was clear. So I wasn't reaching you as much as I would want to. I made you go logical on me and think about what is he doing that I'm enjoying. So would it be fair to say that the metric for success isn't necessarily purely the precision around an accent, but rather the delivery of a story with the accent just receding back to not being noticed? Absolutely. Or bad? Absolutely. I'd say when I when I when I've coached this accent for an American production, I want to make sure that the accent doesn't get in the way of the audience being in the story. And that means that we've got to reach a, a believability level that sells it to anybody who knows, has a sense of what the accent is, but that it never gets in the way of understandability. We've still got it. There's sometimes when we got to go, okay, we got to give that up because we need the audience to get this. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I have some other questions. I hope you guys can stick around just a little bit longer. Um, uh, again, this is in service of the fact that the accents class, which that link you see below here, voheroes.com slash accents, is open for registration right now. Uh, imagine getting this kind of training across four weeks and then a fifth week of live training. And then you might think to yourself, well, where do I find all these examples that Jim is giving Karen Eileen? Well, the real joy of one of the assets of this class is this library that you receive of not only examples of native speakers speaking English with their accents, but the analysis, the actual phonetic analysis, just like Jim led Karen Eileen through uh, on the um, uh, on the uh, uh, in the in the example that he did uh, of each one. And so, when you want to go back and refresh things, you can do that. You can just go back and uh, go, okay, how does the, how, how, is this rhotic? Is it non-rhotic? Is there a tapped R? Is there not a tapped R? You know, what, what, what's the pronunciation of some of the diphthongs and the, and the, where's the placement? These are the things that are covered. And even beyond that, you get updates. Because one of the things that I was curious about when I first took the class was the evolution of accents. You know, here in the United States, the mid-Atlantic accent was in the 30s and 40s, the dominant accent of big movie stars. Why, whatever shall we do? Where shall we be going? You know, it's kind of like almost a, a, a modified British, but Northeastern. It was, it was the accent to note when you were talking about the stars, you know, the Myrna Loys of the world. And, um, <clears throat> And that developed into something very, very uh, utilitarian in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. We're now talking very similar to how we talk all the time. Everybody's up talking, everybody's got vocal fry. I mean, there's all these cool things. And guess what? Jim knows about all this. He not only knows about all this, but he deals with it in a way that you can build it into your actor's toolkit. So, if this is the kind of thing that appeals to you, that you want to add to your actor quiver, please visit VOHeroes accent, uh, sorry, VOHeroes.com slash accents. If you register for the class, please mention my name because, you know, I just love bragging about it to Dan. And uh, you can have this experience, this, this moment of accomplishment. And not just that, not just, hey, <laughs> I did it, but... You can turn around and the next time you get an audition for a video game or for uh, a piece of animation or for uh, a character piece or for an audio book, you can go to this library, review it. I, I find myself doing it for maybe 5, 10, 15 minutes at a time. And I know there's that sense of urgency. I got to get this audition done now. But you can get this done in 15 minutes. Go back through, take a look at the copy that you have, and apply the things that Jim gives you, and you'd be amazed at what happens 
inside your body, inside your mind, when you have this toolkit that you can apply. So uh, viewheroes.com slash accents. Dan, uh, you, you must be so proud uh, of, of the, of the accomplishments of the people that have taken the class. I mean, Jim, he's been, he's been proud for years, but you know, uh, when you, when you look at the way people use what they learn, it must, you know, just make you happy. And I know it's hard to make you happy. Um, yeah, it's the, the promise that the class makes is such a large promise that I still am surprised when I see the success, which is not because the success is rare. It's like what we just saw. I'm, I'm seeing this hundreds of times now, but with Karen Eileen going on that journey with her from tentative, hope I don't screw up and embarrass myself to that's it. And, and frankly, that's, that's the most common reaction we get after one of Jim's lessons is that's it. And I guess he could make it harder. So it that that's the part. Uh, yes, I don't I don't learn as much about subsequent professional successes as I do witnessing the success as someone goes from in real time, knowing they can never do this to what in the words of, of one of our, our graduates. Why did I think this was so difficult? And yeah. that's what's cool. Another, another thing I just uh, an observation I would share with. Uh, folks who watched Karen Eileen go through this. Um, Jim talks a lot about physicality, as you know. Next time Karen Eileen wants to do that character or uh, wants to recall that uh, accent, all she has to do is the physicality, you know, it's the eyebrows, the jaw, and she's right there. And I'm, Jim can't be the first person to have pointed that out, but if the only way you learn is via listen, repeat, you never stumble upon the physicality. And so you don't know to just start there rather than, okay, let me just go through the lines again and hope that it comes back magically. And that's the, I mean, listen and repeat has certainly served a lot of performers well over the years, um, but there are limits to it. And one is you don't learn how it's done. You simply mimic and repeat, uh, or listen and mimic. Um, and if you're good at that, great. The other thing with uh, listen and repeat is you, you know, the expression, you don't know what you don't know. Well, you don't know what you can't hear. So you can listen to someone with a Northern Irish accent over and over and over again. And if you don't hear the difference in how they deliver this sound, uh, they hit this diphthong, or if you don't notice, there's a big difference with THs uh, in Northern Irish. Well, you're never going to hear it. And But when it's you're shown it and you walk through it, then you discover it on your own. And that just makes it a lot easier. So I guess what I'm saying is we hope you'll, you'll take the accents class. If you don't, if you're not already using physicality as a major component of your learning and your recalling, uh, characters and voices. We, we hope you'll consider it. Yeah. Um, we're going to take some questions here real quick. If you have questions, those of you that are, are remaining with us, uh, just pop them in the comments below uh, the video that you're watching. Just scroll down. Uh, there's There should be a write a comment here box and just write it in there and we'll see it when it comes up in the stream. Um, but Jim, we, we've talked a little bit about how to do these things, what it feels like, uh, how to arrive at the physicality, the sound of what we're doing. When you have students tell you why they just simply can't do this, or they're concerned about their ability to be successful, I can imagine any number of, uh, of, I guess, excuses is one way of putting it, but reasons, you know, why I can't do this. Um, what are some of the common ones that you've heard? Too hard, uh, can't make my mouth move that way, uh, I can't hear when I'm correct. What, what have you heard that uh, that 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 you've been able to look at in your process and kind of obviate. You know, I think it's a lot of those very same things. It's just well, I have a, I don't have the biggest thing I probably hear is I just don't have a good ear, and you need to have a good ear to learn it. And now Karen Eileen has a good ear, but there were a couple things that that 
you even struggled to hear as we were working one, like the, 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 ow thing, you were like, oh, if yeah. I hear that, but then I need to hear you say all of those words. And I'm like, I'm not going to give you all those words, but if I can help <laughs> you to understand an access point, that's what's essential. And I think that's yeah. what people have run into in the past who can't do accents is it, as a generalization, they haven't found an access point. And what we need, so one of the things that I would want to reinforce with Karen Eileen over time is going, so every accent you work on now, you need to physicalize, if you're not already, which it sounds like you might do that to some degree, but you need to figure out what exactly is the physicalization of that placement, like how you put your hands there to feel that, and what is the physicalization of that intonation that you latched onto that one, um, and as you start to work on your accents tool belt, your toolkit, what are the different like intonation elements that you find that you physicalize? And that makes it really accessible to you. Then once you can physicalize it, you can see it. So now you've got a visual in addition to the fact that maybe you hear that person in the recording doing it. And then you're hearing your, you're hearing yourself doing this as well. So then you, you now have all these different possible access points to that intonation. Yeah. Uh, Katsi says, it's cool to see how much the physical access, uh, the physical aspect instantly changed what she did. And, uh, you know, I always think about not only the visualization, but the, um, the, the sort of insinuation into your ongoing thing. Like you can't spend your time, especially if you're on camera going, now I'm gonna talk like this, you know, you, you, you can't use your hands to help you do the stuff. But what happens is like with anything over time, it gets easier as you give yourself experience. And I'm sure that's part of it as well. What do you tell people, Jim, in terms of how much they should uh, practice? Well, it's challenging because it's different for each individual. But what I would say, you are better off practicing on a regular basis, even for a smaller amount of time, than putting in two hours working on it all at once. Or at least what the five minutes thing is, is reinforcing it, is touching base with it. So you go, oh, yeah, 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 this is accessible again for me. Yeah. Um, but it varies so much from one individual to another about what their process is. The important thing I'm trying to do with everybody is give them an access point. Mm -hmm. and make sure that they have a way to hold on to that and come back to it. So oftentimes, something that we barely did, but oftentimes one of the questions that I want to ask folks is say something like, okay, what did you just do there? How do you describe to me what you just did? So that when right. you can describe it to me, and if you don't feel certain, you don't seem certain when you're saying that, I may say, so it's this or this, or and one of those will oftentimes you'll latch onto. And it might be what you said, or it might be what I said, but that gives you an access point that yeah. you can really hold on to and carry, carry forward. So yeah. last call for questions. If you have a question, write it in the comments below. We'll see it about mm, 15, 20 seconds after you type it. Um, but we're, we're wrapping things up here. And what I wanted to say to you was, if this is something that has been a challenge for you, if this is something that you thought, I, I just, you know, there are people that are adept at this, and then there's me. I'm here to tell you that likely isn't true. Uh, certainly there are some people who just, you know, who, who have a little bit more of a challenge at it than others. There are some people who just like latch onto it because it's really cool and it fits with their zeitgeist and and it's just really awesome but i've seen people who i've known as clients and thought oh this might be a challenge for them and i've watched them nail things in class and it's really really cool so this is the home study version of it uh if you go to voheroes.com accents you'll find all the materials uh that you can take at your own pace you know, your life is happening the way your life is happening and you can you can you can access these materials at your own pace. And then there's going to be that fifth week that is going to be done live, which kind of frankly has me a little ticked off that I can't take advantage of that. But I'm OK. I'm OK. I'm fine. Uh, if you go to VOHeroes.com slash accents, please, uh, if you register, please mention my name to Dan, say David sent me or David, or just say, you know, XVII, whatever you want to do. You'll see uh, a, a comments field, which is a great place to just say, you know, David sent me or whatever you want to say. 
Yeah, and don't put any questions for this in the comments field on the registration page, because I won't see them. Only Dan will, and he is ill-equipped to answer your questions. If uh, I knew what that meant, I might be offended. <laughs> see, there you go. I, ha uh, I have right. a question. Yeah, go ahead. The, I would love to know how many accents, I feel like the number is going to be very big, but I'm just wondering how many accents with this course we might be able to put into our, our beautiful treasure chest. Well, what we do yeah. during the class, so during those weeks, is we work on seven different accents. So those are the ones that, that we really work on in depth there. But then part of what I do with each one is I... I take elements and go into commentary about now, let's carry this over, or here are the principles you need to know about these other accents. So I start to relate it. And those accents are set up to, to give you these different elements that you can then start to piece together into a bunch of different accents. Because part of what you also get then are all of the materials that I have spent way too much of my life developing and fine tuning. And I'm constantly on the road recording people um, and uh, so that I've got examples of native speakers too. And uh, I'm actually just finishing up a couple more. So it's going to be a total of materials for 50 different accents, 50. actually. Yeah, 50. I'm, I'm going to hit the big 5-0 with the number of accents. Wow. Um, and, and, I, and I also, I want you to understand, hang on one second, Dan, I'll get right to you. Um, sure. I, I want you to know that that because these are additive, right? It's not like there's a hard boundary between various areas around the world. There's always this kind of little overlap thing that happens. I had the lovely opportunity to have lunch with Jim back before the pandemic uh, when he was here in Southern California recording. I, I don't remember how you described it, but it was kind of like Mexicali uh, up talking Southern California, Hispanic English kind of thing. And, wow. you know, and then I go and I watch the news at night when they're talking with you know somebody who saw an accident happen and they happen to be of Hispanic descent. And it's like listening to Jim tell me what he recorded while he was here in town. So it's not just the big seven. And I'm, assu I'm assuming that the seven are, are arrived at because they're the most often in demand by performers and by, by people that are, are asking for accent work, yeah? It's partially that, but it's also about building the toolkit. Like, I don't know that Northern Irish that we worked on today, I don't know that that is necessarily one of, absolutely one of the biggest ones, but it's that intonation element that we worked on. And then I mentioned that you can hear it in, in other accents. That's, I want to work on that one because it's the most extreme version of that intonation that when you realize it's there, but there's actually like a really small version of that in a Yorkshire accent. In a Yorkshire accent, you have a slight sort of off pitch thing that right then grommet. There's a slight off pitch in that. There's an off pitch in the estuary accent as well. But when you start to realize it's in all these different accents and you've worked on it within that one, then we can spread that through the rest of the accents that you might work on. Yeah. Dan, what is it that you wanted to say? Um, just because I think some people might not be clear on it, um, I think we should give a, lend a little more clarity in terms of what we mean by 50 accents. So Jim, the seven, the seven accents that are taught in depth during the class time itself, you want to run through those for people? Just tell them what they are. Yeah, sure. It's uh, RP standard British. And then we go to Cockney. So RP standard British, something along this line. And then we go to Cockney, that sort of working class sort of London East End accent. And then we go from there to the estuary where we start to connect between those two. And then we go to the US and we work on, on a New York accent, specifically sort of a strong kind of Brooklyn stereotype. And then we go from there, we go to the Northern Irish accent that we worked on today. And then we go to a French accent as well and work on that, the light elements of that, the placement challenges, the specific R that's in that. And then we go to Castilian Spanish and work on that, which has a different R that occurs in that. And then um, there's another uh, final video that I share with everybody as well, where I, I talk through how to do all ESL accents, English as a second language accents, because there's so many commonalities that things that we learn from French and things that we learned from the Castilian Spanish, that those elements are actually present in m almost all of the ESL 
uh, foreign language speaker accents. Um, so, so those are the ones that we work on specifically in class. In class. And you also get all of my materials that I've been working on for years on those seven accents. And then over the course of the next few months, you get the rest of that collection of, of the 50 different accents. So this is what people might be confused about otherwise. What Jim's talking about is for the next five months, we are gonna send you eight new accents. And when I say send you the accents, these are the modules and teaching materials that Jim has built just for this purpose. So we're going to send you eight per month for five months. That's a total of 40. And then there are three brand new ones that I think no one has received yet. And in your sixth month, you're going to get those. So that's 43 that come in the five to six months after the class and seven solid ones during the class itself. So our one of our big goals is to avoid your feeling overwhelmed while at the same time arming you with as many tools as we can. I mean, the last thing we want to do is, is have you download all these and have them in a folder on your hard drive that you never open. And one reason that happens is because we download everything we can get and then it's overwhelming. So instead, uh, just this little bit, come on, you can do that. And before you know it, it's time for another month's goodies. Yeah. Listen, you guys have been just great. I thank you so much. Uh, for those of you watching, voheroes.com slash accents. If you go there, that will send you right over to the registration page for the class. Registration is open right now as we record this on Monday, October 5th. Uh, and if you act today, uh, up to tomorrow night at 9, Tuesday night at 9, you will get a $300 tuition rebate. Dan will pay the first $300 of your... Uh, your Dan and Jim. No, no, just, just right Dan. Now. No, no, just Dan. <laughs> just Dan, Dan keeps telling it, it's telling me it's just me. So uh, I'm see, oh, Dan, that's why I'm trying oh. to counteract that. Um, <laughs> but if you do it, you will uh, get a terrific bargain. It's already a bargain. It's already paid for itself in my career. Mm -hmm. uh, I was able to book uh, at least three audiobooks this year off of the auditions that I did that had regional and uh, international uh, accents in them. And I didn't get the reaction of, oh, that's a really accurate accent. What I got was, wow, yes, let's go with you. And that's all I wanted. I didn't want like, you know, A plus, I could hear the, you know, the, the, the you, were, you were actually on the west side of Cleveland, not the east side of Cleveland, <laughs> you know. So, um, and, and you find out so many really cool things along the way, which is so lovely because, you know, in addition to just recording everybody, Jim's traveled the world. And so he understands the politics and why things happened the way they did and how, how the nomadic journeys of certain peoples made uh, uh, these accents happen. He's a student of history as well. It's just this lovely deep dive into more than just listen, repeat, yeah, you got it, you know, which is just great. So viewheroes.com slash accents. Thank you, everybody, for your uh, your lovely uh, comments about how much this has been enjoyable for you. I appreciate that very much. Viewheroes.com slash accents. Mention my name and nothing special will happen for you, but I'd appreciate it. <laughs> uh, so Dan O'Day, uh, Jim Johnson, Karen Eileen Gordon, thank you for, for being our uh, guinea pig slash victim slash actor today. It was lovely. Yeah. And uh, that'll wrap it up for me. I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th. I thank you so much for watching. And if you're watching this on replay, you can still put questions and comments in the comments below. We see those as you watch the replay. So thank you for showing up. I appreciate it very much. And I will say goodbye. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Bye. David.